So I'm gonna allow Ellie and uh, Nilu to take over and share more about themselves and this great process that we're gonna have today. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Us too. Thank you. All right, let me share my screen. All right, everybody, welcome. Uh, so as I also said, I'm Nilu, this is Ellie. So today's presentation is essentially a meditation 101. Uh, so we're gonna use meditation to help reduce stress, declutter our minds and optimize performance. Um, before we get started, so just go ahead and drop a yes or a no in the chat if you have meditated in the past. Yes, yes, no, a lot of great participation. Perfect. Nice. So we have a few <laughs> no's coming in. Yes, namaste. namaste. No, no. Mm -hmm. All right. So it looks Perfect. like about half and half, maybe. Um, so a little background on us. Um, Ellie and I obviously are both UCI grads. Uh, I studied physics. Ellie studied art. And um, we've also had very different career paths since. She's basically been a serial entrepreneur since she was 19. I spent a lot of time in the corporate world, um, in public health, and then eventually into corporate consulting. And we've been friends for over 20 years, and we've been working together on the internal world for about 15 years. And together, we run a company called Peace Unleashed, which is a publishing house, and we create content that helps you connect to your inner peace. That is our mission. Uh, and no better time than right now during this quarantine to do that. So um, Ellie can take on the next. Yeah, so as we get started, you guys, we, we thought it would be kind of fun to start with a, um, a little exercise. So if you're walking, you might want to just pause for a minute and, and do this exercise with us so you can get the experience of it too. And this is what uh, I want you guys to do. Stare at this image on the screen. And as you're listening to me, just keep staring at it and see if you can memorize every single detail about this image. So the shape, the color, the how far apart the shapes are, you know, where everything is situated. See if you can memorize every single detail that you can notice about this image. And if you start thinking about other stuff, like wondering why we're doing this exercise in the first place, just uh, dismiss that and come back to the image and try to kind of memorize every single detail about it, right? So your mission right now is to just look at this image and memorize it as best as you can. Now close your eyes and as your eyes are closed, try to recreate that same image in your mind's eye. Try to recreate every detail of it down to the color, to the distance between the different lines, what the shape of the lines was, what the color was. And if your mind wanders here, do the same thing. Just bring your attention right back to that image. Dismiss anything that is not this image and just try to recreate it in your mind's eye. And when you start thinking about something else, just come back to this image. The only thing that matters right now is recreating it as exactly as possible in your mind's eye. Even all the way to the distance between the lines, where on the page it's situated. And no matter what your mind wants to do, bring it back to this image and just recreate it. Right, you can open your eyes. 
Congratulations, everyone. You just meditated for two minutes. So those of you who said no to the meditation question, uh, congratulations, you just, you just did. And that's all for us. Back to you, Elsa. <laughs> and and uh, we're done. <laughs> so what, what just happened, right? What just happened? What, what is meditation? A lot of times people have a hard time meditating because we don't even know what meditation is. And most of the time people think this is what meditation is. Some guy sitting on top of a mountaintop, you know, uh, zenning out, uh, emptying his mind and being one with the elements. And okay, that is meditation, but also is this, is people like you and me just sitting in uh in our living rooms in our offices uh, you know on the floor on a chair and closing our eyes and today what we're going to talk about is what it, what are we actually doing when we close our eyes you know and we sit in meditation meditation is actually a gym for your mind it is a training of the mind it's a focusing of the mind and it's a quieting of the mind notice that i didn't say it's an emptying of your mind that's you know sometimes your mind might become empty but that's not what meditation is the goal is not to empty your mind so if the goal is not to empty your mind then what is the goal let's talk about first of all how it even works how does how does meditation work uh, when we meditate, we generally say you sit up straight. Why is it important to sit up straight? Can you lie down? Yes, you can lie down. But the problem is most of the time when we're lying down, we're lying down because we want to rest and we want to uh, kind of relax and we want to go to sleep. So we associate lying down with relaxation and going to sleep. And as we'll learn today, meditation is a very active thing that we do. So when you're sitting up straight, you're, you're engaged, right? And when your spine is straight, the energy that actually occupies your body, that's a whole other talk, uh, <laughs> it has opportunity to flow up and down your spine, right? And then what do we do when we are sitting down straight? We close our eyes. Is that necessary? No, we just demonstrated that. We just meditated with our eyes open. Um, but the reason we close the eyes is because we want to limit the amount of stimuli that go into our body. And why do we want to limit? As we get into the mechanics of meditation in just a moment, you'll really understand why we want to limit because we want to really exercise our minds and wondering about, you know, what color is this? Why did the, why is that piece of furniture over there? And, oh, I need to fold the, fur, uh, uh, the laundry. You know, that doesn't help us, right? So we close the eyes so that we can limit the amount of stimuli coming in. We establish a home base. So what is a home base? Home base is a term that we kind of coined uh, and it refers to where we decide we want to focus our attention. Now, there's a lot of different modalities of meditation, right? There's all these words that people use, transcendental meditation, uh, uh, vipassana, anapana, right? There's all mindfulness. What, how are they different? The only difference between them is where the home base is situated. So what, what do we mean by home base? Before we sit down to meditate, we decide this is what I'm going to focus on. What I'm gonna focus on can be a lot of different things. In the exercise we just did, your home base was that image that we recreated. So I can have the home base be something visual, like uh, a leaf that I'm holding in my hand or tactile, right? Uh, I can have, or a flicker of a candle I focus on. Or a home base can be something I'm listening to. It can be music or chanting. It can be something that I'm um, saying verbally. It can be a mantra that I'm either saying out loud or I'm saying internally, right? And depending on, like for instance, in transcendental meditation, that you focus on a mantra. In Vipassana, your home base is the sensations in the body. 
And anapana, your home base is the breath going in and out of your nostrils. So depending on what your home base is, you, you, know, you might call it something different, but essentially what we are doing in meditation is the same thing, which is we decide we're gonna focus on one home base and then we set a timer because you don't wanna be thinking about, you know, how long has it been? Do, do I need to get up and check on X, Y, and Z? If you set a timer for 60 seconds or two minutes or five minutes, you know that, hey, in, in, in five minutes, my timer is going to go off and these five minutes are mine. And then what do we do? You observe, you release. So now my goal, my entire goal becomes every time my attention drifts away, from my home base to bring my attention back to the home base. So what does that mean? That means I'm saying my home base is the breath. So I'm going to focus on the breath going in and out. Now I'm sitting in meditation and uh, my mind starts wandering. And the moment I notice that my mind is wandering, something really powerful has happened. I have now become the observer of my mind. This is very important moment in anyone's life because most of the time we think that we, you know, the, our mind, our thoughts are happening to us. They have nothing to do with, uh, with us, right? It's, it's, it's something that is inflicted on us. But now when I'm noticing my mind wandering, I become the observer. Now something really powerful happens here that I can now choose to not engage in that thought. And here's why the home base is so important. Because if I have a home base to go back to, I can say, okay, so this thought just happened. I just thought about, uh, you know, what I did in third grade and uh, I'm in the middle of meditation. So I'm going to, as the observant and, and as the chooser of my mind, I'm going to let go of that. And I'm going to now choose to take my attention somewhere else. And where do I bring my attention back to the home base? I always return back to the home base. Now that is like one push up for your mind. Very powerful. Whether I meditate for one minute or one hour, the duration doesn't matter because all that the duration of a meditation gives me is more opportunities for me to do those mental push-ups. Right? So even a 60 second meditation is powerful. Now, so who meditates, right? So this practice has been around for thousands and thousands of years, but more and more people are coming out of the closet that they've had this secret tool of meditation that has helped them build their success. And this is just a small example of celebrities, athletes, um, world leaders who meditate. So we have Michael Jordan to Dwayne Johnson, um, comedian Seinfeld, um, Oprah, Ellen, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga meditates before she creates music, which we're going to get into why that is an important thing. Uh, Jeff Weiner has, has made it a point to make sure LinkedIn has a presence of meditation. Uh, he's actually has like a mindfulness um, executive now on his team. So all of these people, Bill Gates, have found that meditation Whatever form of home base they're using, whether it's transcendental or upasana, you know, as Ellie was mentioning, they somehow have incorporated meditation into their life and also have attributed their success to meditation to some regard. So these are just individuals, but who else? You gotta click on the. Oh. <laughs> uh, so companies also have prioritized meditation. Uh, Apple, Google. Salesforce, and even the FBI, uh, which we have some connections, inside connections to know that they, at their headquarters uh, in Washington, DC, they have a dedicated meditation space and they take time out for meditation. So all of these great companies and world leaders are meditating and here's why. Uh, Obviously, like I said, it's been a practice for thousands of years, but there's been a growing 
uh, trend of people meditating just from 2012 to present it has tripled the number of people have been meditating has oh, has tripled and this this uh, statistic uh, might even be more now because mm -hmm. um, just in the last year as we have been in this work we have seen so many more companies pop up you know like companies like headspace calm inside timer that are helping comp helping large organizations on on a global level incorporate meditation into their employees lives mm -hmm. so why is meditation important so on average i mean this number i've seen a couple of variations of it but we think 60 to 80 thousand thoughts per day and as ellie mentioned one of the beauty beautiful parts of meditation is that we finally realize that we are the awareness behind the thought. So those thoughts are not just happening to us at random. Um, so, and thoughts are not equal to facts. A fact is sometimes a thought feels like a fact because we have thought it so many times over and over again. And we basically have programmed it into our computer, into our brain, but thoughts are not facts. And one, one good way of kind of distinguishing if, if you have a <laughs> thought that comes up and you're like, no, I know that's a fact is, can you find an example that is its alternative, right? So if you think, I don't know, <laughs> all baby elephants live in Africa. Is there a baby elephant that lives anywhere outside of Africa, right? So a random example, I know, but that's a really good question to ask yourself when you, when you have a thought that comes up that maybe doesn't feel good or is reinforcing some beliefs where you question, is there a counter um, argument to this thought? Mm -hmm. uh, thoughts versus perceptions and beliefs. So, our underlying perceptions, our beliefs that we have picked up, developed over our childhood, over our teenage years, just over life, give way to our thoughts. So a really another good practice that comes in med with meditation is becoming aware of the thoughts that you're having and knowing that you are the creator of those thoughts and of the observer of those thoughts. Where are those thoughts coming from? What is that underlying belief or perception that's leading to that thought being generated. And that's where the inner work becomes a journey. It's not a one-time deal. You know, you don't just do one push up and then you have Arnold Schwarzenegger arms, right? So it is a practice, it's a daily practice, it's a lifelong journey. And then thoughts and sensations in the body. So Ellie and I are both practitioners. We've both taken 10 day meditation uh, retreats with Vipassana. And they, they talk about the sensations in your body. Um, they call them sankharas, they're that, that these things that are essentially are coming up to be released. And when a thought is uh, being thought over and over again, being practiced over and over again, it eventually will turn into uh, a sensation in your body. And eventually you're going to act upon those sensations. You're going to act upon those thoughts. So really you want to get to those root of those thoughts, get to the root of those beliefs and start to reprogram yourself. And that's where meditation is key. And another question to ask yourself, which we um, have kind of alluded to, to are, are your thoughts in control of you or are you a prisoner to, uh, or are you in control of your thoughts? So a lot of people feel like they are a prisoner in their own mind. Yeah. And especially right now, I think everybody's like in quarantine and left alone yeah. with their thoughts. All the distractions and that we normally have, uh, have, I mean, they're not all gone, but they've definitely been minimized. Uh, and then we're in a household, yeah. with people having to live with their own thoughts and the mixing of that. And, and sometimes living with people who trigger certain emotional responses and certain yeah. thought patterns and reinforce some negative thought patterns. And uh, yeah, I, I, we think that now, uh, never before has there been a time when meditation was more important, mm -hmm. you know, to, to make part of our lives. Uh, so meditation allows for physical, emotional, psychological balance, uh, clarity. It, it 
you're able to actually problem solve more and we're going to give you some of the science behind that and also helps you prioritize tasks so like not everything not everything has to be done at the same time so being able to kind of pick through um, those your list and prioritize them uh, mental agility and uh, being able to establish new habits when you become aware of what you're doing you can more easily decide what you're going to dismiss and what you're going to pick up right and then finally intuition which uh we what we love which is why we do the work we do is we know that you know it sounds cliche but because it's true deep within <laughs> us lies all the answers so with going inward with shutting down the monkey brain you're able to tap into that inspiration and intuition that lives within you okay so what does the research show um <clears throat> with the physiological changes uh if you guys can see the image here um meditation leads to increases in gray matter and cortical thickness essentially better brain functionality and problem solving mm -hmm. And it reduces the amygdala size, which is our stress level and also our fight or flight response. So when you are able to meditate, these are some of the physiological um, impacts, improvements on the brain. <clears throat> now, what happens to our heart? There are tons of studies that show that meditation helps <coughs> create heart coherence. <clears throat> what do I mean by that? The human heart beat to beat is generally not, is, is not steady if we're in a state of stress. When we are able to meditate regularly we, and we lower those stress responses, we're able to create that steady heart beat to beat pattern and that creates heart coherence. And because the heart is connected to all the rest of our organs, we create that coherence within our entire body. And the kind of pie in the sky, the what you want to have is to have the brain and the heart in coherence with each other. Mm -hmm. And additional uh, benefits to the physical body beyond the heart and the brain, uh, our immune system improves. Uh, again, great for <laughs> quarantine, uh, decreasing blood pressure, obviously with the reduced stress, uh, improving sleep, uh, the cortisol levels that I mentioned, and also even inflammatory situations you can have some re reduction in inflammatory. Um, so we've said a lot. Uh, I know we kind of want to take questions as we go. Uh, Sharzo says, thanks for the affirmation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me, that my, my good friend uh, likes to remind me that we are the architects of our thoughts. That's right. So we are more in control than we give ourselves credit for. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting because uh, when you ask people, and, and we can ask you right now, right? Uh, do you believe that you are in charge of your destiny? Right? Put a, put a yes in the comment section. If you believe. If you believe <laughs> you are in charge of your destiny, you can, you can create, uh, you know, like the, what you want. Yes, why right? not? <laughs> Perfect. And do you believe that you have control over your thoughts? <clears throat> Easier said than done. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. To a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So this is, this is really interesting because most of us, when we actually are faced with that question we're like yeah of course i'm in charge of my destiny and of course i can control my thoughts but in practice we don't practice it right <laughs> so we we get hijacked all the time and then uh we're like uh, and then we justify it <laughs> but this happened but they did this but they did that right so so we we put it on somebody else right um but but he cut me off in the freeway and whatever and the reason Meditation is so powerful is because when we actually get good at <coughs> noticing our thought patterns, right? And not only noticing it, but noticing when we are hijacked by a thought pattern that is not serving us, right? Someone 
cuts me off in traffic and I go immediately into uh, what an what an a-hole and uh, this idiot uh, blah 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 I almost hit him and and now that's triggering more thoughts within me that are in line with that emotional you know signature that I have within myself of frustration and anger so now if I've meditated if I am a meditator and I meditate as little as 10 minutes a day or five minutes a day, now all of a sudden in that moment, I can catch myself and say, oh, wow, this is kind of an extreme reaction, you know? And because our thoughts create our emotions, right? The thoughts that I think uh, create a physiological response within me that, that, uh, trigger those emotions and then it becomes a cyclical thing, right? Uh, now I can say, how am I thinking about this situation that's making me feel this way and how else can I think about it? Well, maybe, um, so now notice the exact thing that I do in meditation, I am doing in this mm -hmm. situation, right? And in meditation, I become aware of the thought and as the person who is aware of the thought, I'm choosing to bring my attention somewhere else. I'm choosing to bring my attention intentionally into a place of my choice, not where it just happens to land, right? So now in that moment, I'm like, where is my thought? What is the thought that has hijacked me? Now, as the person who is aware of that thinking, I can choose deliberately where else to place my attention. Maybe that person's wife is in labor and he <laughs> has to get to the hospital. <laughs> Maybe he had a really rough day and he just needs to get to a bridge and jump. I don't know. Like, and, whatever's up. Right? Yeah, and it could be it could be any scenario, right? But like, yeah. if we can choose our thoughts, why not choose a thought that's going to help us feel better, right? That's right. Um, so, so, and, and here's um, some more data in case you're, you're gonna, still on the edge. You're like, yes, but you know, Ellie, I don't have time for meditation. Quarantine is taking all of my time. <laughs> I, I can't, you know, I don't have a minute to sit down. So the uh, study was done, um, um, I think by the Harvard, the business review or something. And uh, what we can send you all of we have the resources. We have the resources that we can send you for all of these numbers. Uh, but as far as stress and anxiety, I mean, everybody is experiencing the stress and anxiety right now, right? So wouldn't it be great to, in, to, do something for five minutes, 10 minutes a day that, that improves your anxiety by 60%, that reduces PTSD by 73%, that reduces blood pressure by 80%, and reduces insomnia by 75%. I mean, how many of us could really benefit from this? And, you know, performance. Mm -hmm. And um, I think quarantine is an amazing time to create <laughs> because we have the world is on pause so we have all of this time unless you're on the front line <laughs> yeah unless you're on the front line but we have all of this time to be creative and to do the things that we haven't had an opportunity to do and knowing that meditating increases your productivity it uh, i mean this study was done specifically at a at a workspace uh that showed it reduced absenteeism increased profits and reduced school uh suspensions um but just knowing that it's increasing your productivity and your ability to problem solve and and find new solutions to old problems i mean we are faced with problems that we haven't faced with before having an activity that that increases your ability to respond to it from a place <clears throat> of creativity and solutioning uh, and lowers your stress level at the same time i think it's pretty darn pretty darn powerful right uh but there's a warning with meditation there's always and side effects. There's guys. always side effects. And the, the biggest side effect here is that if you actually start meditating for like as little as five minutes a day, you might uh, start enjoying your quarantine and, um, and you know, <laughs> dancing in your living room. <laughs>
there's uh, some more side effects. Um, you know, your mental agility uh, increases, improves, so you can make better and faster decisions. You are more patient. <laughs> and I, we have a lot of mom friends. We don't have kids, but we have a lot of mom friends who are on their, you know, breaking point, you know, so it, it gives you a lot of patience to be able to stay calm in the midst of storms. Um, you have more insight, so you can actually solution better. Um, you can connect the dots more easily. And this is a really, um, this is such a cool side effect because I can't tell you as a meditator how many times all of a sudden there's all these random puzzle pieces come together and I can attest to how amazing it feels to, to experience that. Um, you are, you feel more grounded in relationships. And right now in quarantine, people who are quarantined with people who push their <laughs> buttons, you really, we really need grounding there. Uh, and we're more introspective and we communicate a lot more clearly. And here's, uh, the most amazing thing is that you're more deliberate and less reactive. So most of us think that, yes, I have control over, um, my life, I have control over my thoughts, but then a thought happens and we get hijacked and then it ruins our day for the whole day. And what if that didn't have to ruin your day? Mm -hmm. What if instead of a whole day or a whole week <clears throat> lost, you could catch yourself within minutes and reframe it and choose a thought. And now you are truly becoming a deliberate creator of your life. So how can you get started? <clears throat> so just, we're, just a quick review. Uh, we mm -hmm. talked about the home base. So picking your home base. Uh, the breath is the easiest of all home, ba home bases because it's always available to you. Uh, you can take it everywhere you go. Uh, if it's not with you, you're not alive. Um, a candle is actually was my first home base when I first started to learn how to meditate. Um, Think of that uh, circle exercise that Ellie had you do. I looked at a candle and then I recreated it in my mind's eye. Um, music is a great home base uh, or, and if that's too distracting, obviously music without lyrics uh, is the best. Uh, the hum of your air conditioner, you know, just a, a steady sound that you can always uh, come back to when you realize you've been thinking. What time of day? Uh, and this really, you need to um, try out different things and see what works best for you. Uh, I've found that mornings are ideal uh, if I'm trying to get grounded for the day. But if I've had like a really hard day or just a very busy day and I want to shut it down before I go to bed, I also like to do a quick meditation then mm -hmm. and maybe some journaling to go with it. Um, just so that I don't take all of that into the sleep and then, you know, subconsciously program myself uh, while I'm sleeping. Uh, or, you know, so a lot of people, when I used to work in corporate, they used little breaks between meetings um, to do a midday meditation. You have to kind of try it out, see what works best for you. There's no yes, right, right or wrong answer here. And then the time uh, you want to pick, figure out how long you want to meditate for, and then use some type of, you know, timer, uh, Med Insight Timer is a meditation app. They have thousands of teachers and thousands and thousands of different guided meditations, but I use Insight Timer for the actual timer. Uh, mm -hmm. And they have like different bells that you can use. And it's great because it helps track your meditation. So if you're a beginner, uh, you can see, you know, how many days you've done it in a row, how many days you've missed, and it gives you little reminders. Mm -hmm. And the biggest part is to commit, you know, um, take it day by day, just like it's a, it's a new habit you're trying to develop, right? So uh, you might not start meditating every day right now, but every conscious breath that you take, so every breath that you're able to take without like a thought being jammed in there is a meditation. So that could be one breath a day. And then you, and, and you're going to really enjoy how you feel when you come out of it. Um, so you're going to want to build that practice. So workplace applications of meditation, and, but this could also be applied, you know, if you're working from home. Uh, midday quickie is what we like to call it. So when I worked in consulting, I had 
back to back meetings. I mean, hours and hours. I would start at sometimes 6 a.m. because I had clients on the East Coast and they would go all the way to eight o'clock, seven o'clock, back to back. But finding that space in between to take a break, to just even go to the bathroom was really hard. So a midday quickie, you know, you could even take it on the toilet, uh, you know, being on mute, obviously, please, uh, and no camera share. But we were kind of half joking, joking, but find the time in your day to get still, to practice this new art that you're incorporating into your life. Uh, the thought awareness. So uh, Ellie already kind of um, went into this, but as you start meditating, you're not, the meditation, the reason we sit and meditate is because we want to be able to incorporate that into our day to day, right? To be able to have that thought awareness, even when we're not meditating, because life doesn't happen on your meditation mat. It happens out here. It happens interacting with other people. Uh, Eckhart Tolle uh, talks about, you know, this guy who goes and lives in a Zen monastery for six months. And he's like, I found light enlightenment. And then he comes to fly back to the U S and in the airport in Tibet, he gets into a fight with people. He hasn't really found calm and peace, right? Cause life happens out here with interacting with other people. But when you're able to have that thought awareness, you can have it in mid conversation in a, mm -hmm. uh, in a, you know, uh, being able to, um, discern when things happen day to day, you know, running into somebody at the bank that you didn't want to see that thought awareness mm -hmm. is there. And then, uh, returning to your home base. So let's say the thought awareness is just not enough, right? So maybe, <laughs> maybe the thought has picked up so much momentum. You, you didn't recognize it earlier on as a thought that was kind of hijacking you. If, if it starts to build up that momentum, it's going to be really hard to kind of dismiss the thought. So then that practice of returning to your home base is great. Maybe you have a mantra for yourself that you can choose to incorporate or um, Ellie used to sing a song to herself. Like it, it, it really depends what works for you, but those are ways you want to be able to incorporate the practice of meditation into your day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. So what's holding you back? I'm doing it wrong. Uh, you're not doing it wrong. We just gave you all the different tools that you can use to incorporate meditation. Uh, even if you sit and are, have tons of thoughts, you're aware that you're having thoughts, right? Like that is the first step. So uh, give, your give yourself a break. Uh, I don't know how to stop thinking. It's not about emptying your mind, it's mind training. So give those, uh, actually those thoughts are helping you train, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't wanna stop thinking. <laughs> I think therefore I am. Um, again, huge falsehood. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I had a guy tell me that on a date. Uh, he's like, I don't want to meditate. Stop. I don't want to meditate. I don't want to stop thinking. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's the training again of your mind. You can actually have more powerful thoughts mm -hmm. when you are the creator, when you are not creating by default, when you're creating yeah. deliberately. And uh, we actually have an entire other workshop talk on being a deliberate creator versus living by default. So it's not, we're not taking the power of thinking away from you. We're just helping you fine tune that amazing computer powerhouse you have in your head. It's hard for me to commit. Uh, don't, don't make a huge commitment. Start with one minute a day. Um, we have a meditation that takes you from one minute, uh, one minute or five, five minutes. minutes and builds up to 15 minutes every day you're building and you're learning different tools about the internal world. Um, so that's a really good tool that you can use to build your meditation practice. I don't have time. You all have time during the quarantine. I don't want to hear that one. <laughs> it feels like a waste of time. Uh, yeah, your, your, uh, your ego is going to tell you that just like, you know, working out might feel like a waste of time. Um, it, it, it is, you know, with all jokes aside, it just, sometimes you feel like, oh my God, I can, I can be doing so much more with my time than sitting here for five, even five minutes, but meditation actually helps you create more time mm -hmm. in your diet because you are now stretching the time that you do have. You're able to live with more presence and awareness and then you realize you can be more productive. You, that's why those productivity um, studies show that people who meditate actually are more productive, but 
it's a very, very common experience when you first start to meditate that when, as soon as you sit down, you're going to get a laundry list of things you need to mm-hmm. complete. Just sit anyway. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't have time for to sit for five minutes, you should be sitting for an hour. That's because <laughs> your mind has completely taken over. So the practice is, you know, it's a process of practice. It's against my religion. Meditation is mind training. <laughs> it is not tied to a very, any specific religion. Yes. Tons of religions talk about meditation, but meditation itself is mind training. So it has, you don't have to think about it, about a spiritual practice. That, that, that <laughs> objection is actually one of my favorites because to, to me, it sounds like as absurd as saying, well, vegetables are against my religion. Right. Eating you know? healthy <laughs> is against my religion. <laughs> I don't believe in this new AG stuff, newsflash, it's old AG stuff. It's been around for a very long time. So it's not new age. It's just more people are coming out of the closet and talking about it. Clearing the clutter, worry ways saves time. Yeah, I mean, the <clears throat> worry is like one of the most unproductive things you can do because worrying is not gonna help you solve at all, right? You're just mm-hmm. looking at it through a very narrow, narrow lens where when you are able to open up your mind and make all those connections that, mm-hmm. that you cannot do when you're, you can't create the solution from the same state as the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we're, uh, I, f- I feel overwhelmed. How do I begin? How do I begin? Well, we're going <laughs> to rewatch gonna, this. <laughs> we're going to go right into that. <laughs> so we're, we're, we'll do a quick, uh, uh, well, it's not midday evening quickie. <laughs> Uh, but I do want to answer some questions before we go yeah. in. Uh, Michael says, I wonder how this plays into OCD behavior. It actually is very helpful in OCD behavior, Michael. Uh, we have a, a lot of friends, uh, some friends who are majorly OCD, who've been now meditating for um, years. a few <laughs> years. Uh, I think they were exposed to it at, uh, at our meditation parties and started meditating. And we can see night and day night and day i mean the way they can they can look at their behavior <laughs> and reframe their thought patterns and it's, it's just unbelievable how, like and that's like immediate surrounding like i was telling nilu the other day i'm like who is that because that's yeah. not that's not the person who came to us you know two years ago three years ago uh, but it's, you know, becoming aware of the thought patterns and then becoming the chooser of the thought patterns, because I think with OCD, uh, it's uh, that deliberate choosing of the thoughts is very, uh, is very problematic. It's very difficult. And then the more you can do it in meditation, the more easily you're able to do it in the life, in real life situations. Yeah, and you're what the brain studies, mm-hmm. you're actually slowing mm-hmm. down the brain wave. So when we're yeah. in high beta, we're in this fight or flight mode, it's much harder to slow down that to kind of negate mm-hmm. those thoughts. But once you're able to get into like an alpha state of brain wave state, then it's much easier. And that takes practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and another way it helps with OCD, Michael, is that it, through the reduction of our stress responses. Um, anxiety and stress are a big part of that disorder. And uh, so you're actually going at it in a number of different ways. Okay, so we have uh, just uh, seven seven minutes remaining. So we'll do a quick five minute quickie. Is that okay, Elsa? Is that okay? All right. right. So um, uh, we'll just do it with guidance. Uh, Music on Zoom has not been the our friend. So we're going to forego the music. So even if you haven't (laughs) meditated before, just your home base is your breath. And if that's difficult, it's my voice. So close your eyes and sit with your back straight and simply allow your breath to flow in and out of your nostrils. And as you're listening here, as you're sitting here, just focus all of your attention on your breath and simply become aware of it for now. Become aware of the breath flowing in and become aware of it flowing out.
And when your mind starts to wander, simply notice that your mind has wandered and bring your attention, your awareness back to your breath. Now, as you notice your breath and observe it, Notice how easy the breath is. How you don't have to do anything for it. How it simply flows in and it simply flows out. And notice too that wherever this breath is, it's exactly right. It's exactly perfect. If the breath is shallow, it's shallow. If it's deep, it's deep. It's exactly right where it is. You might notice that as you focus on the breath, it does start to slow down just a little. And maybe your body too starts to let go just a little. Maybe your shoulders release. And you let go of whatever you've been holding on to there. Your arms might release. And your hands might become a little heavier as they too let go. And your sit bones too, just letting go and relaxing. And your thighs letting go. And your knees and your calves and your feet. Everything just kind of letting go and relaxing and sinking down. And you might notice your breath now is even a little bit deeper, a little gentler. And you might feel a little more connected to it. And as you observe this breath, allow this breath to enter your belly, take a deep breath, fill up your belly, fill up your chest all the way to the brim and hold your breath. and sigh as you let go. And once more, fill up your belly, fill up your chest all the way to the brim and hold your breath and see if you can cultivate a positive emotion, maybe of love, maybe of appreciation. And sigh as you let go. And one last time, fill up your belly, fill up your chest all the way to the brim and hold your breath at the very top. See if you can just hug yourself with this positive emotion of appreciation for yourself, for who you are. And sigh as you let go. And when you're ready, 
you may open your eyes. <clears throat> All right. So <clears throat> some good news. Uh, I don't want to talk too loud. Um, so we're going to provide a resource sheet uh, for you guys with some like really some of the things we mentioned, obviously the, the studies, but some of the apps that we like to use, some basic meditation um, to get you started resources. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, we have our YouTube channel and every Monday we release a guided meditation and it's Ellie uh, guiding and it's just paired with really beautiful music uh, and there are different lengths of time and usually different topics. So check that out. Um, so we do want to leave if there are questions. I know we took some along the way, but if there are any questions that came up for you guys, I do want to open up dialogue for that. Hey, who's going to do that midday quickie tomorrow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so our YouTube channel is called Peace Unleashed. So um, I had it on the screen earlier. Yeah, here we go. So it's youtube.com backslash Peace Unleashed. And as Nidu mentioned, every <laughs> Monday we have um, the YouTube channel, by the way, was born out of <laughs> quarantine. quarantine. <laughs> Yay. Because all of our workshops and live events were canceled. We had a whole year planned out, guys. <laughs> yeah. We we're like, we're going to kill it this year. Speaking engagements, um, uh, workshops, all sorts of stuff. And we're like, what do we do now? And uh, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dennis, um, so yes, there's tons of books on meditation. Uh, any one recommend that I recommend that we recommend? This is not specific to a meditation book, mm -hmm. but The Power of Now mm -hmm. is by far a beautiful book to get you started. Uh, and he talks about the mind. Yes, uh, Shahzad is flashing yeah. her copy. Uh, we have a book club and we just read that last round. Uh, yeah. And I think we've each read it like five times. And yeah. every time I read this book, I learn something new. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, he's one of the best spiritual teachers of mm -hmm. our time. Yeah. And if you're interested in the science, the connection between the mind and the body mm -hmm. and how meditation can actually, uh, heal your body and, um, oh, you and <laughs> what we have it down here, uh, and, and allow your body to enter spontaneous remission, which is a phenomenon that has been studied now. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's books speak on that. Uh, yeah. We also read uh, Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe in our book club, which is his latest book, but you don't have to start with this one. He has uh, several um, where he's talking about the research and uh, yeah. And then Gigi, for children, um, I, Inside Timer has tons of different types of meditation. So you can look at, look at, their catalog for kids. And then um, on our YouTube channel, we also interview thought leaders. And the, yeah. the interview that was released today is with Murray Hittery, who is creator of something called Mind Travel, uh, which is this musical experience um, with these silent, it's a silent concert with headphones. And right now, because of the quarantine, he's releasing uh, for those most at need. And one of those groups is children and, and parents. Mm -hmm. uh, so once I have that, link available i don't think it's live yet i can also share that with you and it's really for helping kids tap into their creativity during this quarantine time mm -hmm. a lot of kids are missing missing the connection they get in, in school mm -hmm. okay well that was really wonderful it was really nice to be able to center and mm -hmm. refresh especially at the end of the day that was an amazing <laughs> guided uh, meditation. Thank you so much. I think we all got a lot out of it. The comments are just raving. Uh, thank you for sharing your YouTube channel. Please subscribe. One of the other things that the Alumni Association has created recently is a mentorship platform. You can connect with both Ellie and Nilu directly there. Uh, it's appnet uci.edu. It's at uh, the top of our chat. Again, ant, A N T then net at uci.edu it's very easy to join it basically will take your linkedin profile and kind of 
migrate it over, or you can make your own profile. You can connect with alumni to help you find a job, to mentor you, or you can be a mentor to other alumni, students, et cetera. A, uh, we're very thrilled about that. And again, our alumni website will have upcoming events. Our next Wellness Wednesday, the 20th, is the um, benefits of laughter and how laughter can be healing. Seven o'clock, please register for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. The uh, presenters are coming from our Ant Eaters in Art. So alumni from our Ant Eater chapter, another wonderful chapter. Uh, I would encourage you to join us again um, next Wednesday or the Wednesday following. Thanks you again, Ellie. Thank you again, Nilu. You did an amazing job. Very appreciative of what you were able to do with us today and provide. We look forward to seeing you in the future. And if you're in the LA area, please join the chapter. You'll be able to meet these wonderful women. They're going to have some amazing events with the LA chapter that'll be very unique, um, is what I, I've been hearing little whispers of. So I'm thrilled <laughs> about that. Uh, so we've gone over a little bit of over time, I, I, you know, but I think it was well worth it. Uh, until, until we see you again, zot, zot, zot. See you next Wednesday. <laughs>